All praise to the Almighty for another yom, another day, another day that we hadn't witnessed before. Baruch be he. All praise to you. Salam alaikum. I'm your brother Eliezer. Ben Shalom Malakizadak. Servant of the Most High House. And Yahu Arain Zion. May it be well with you. Now, <clears throat> today we're going to read Revelations 2 9 and 3 9. Uh, because it is very important for us to get an understanding that uh, they've written that the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So there is someone who is uh, perpetrating, if you would, the biblical Hebrews. And so we will read Revelations 2 9. It is written, I know about your sufferings and your poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of those opposing you. They say they are Jews, or Yahudi, or Yahudim, true verses or words of Yah. But they are not, because their synagogue belongs to Satan. Don't be afraid of what you're about to suffer. The devil will throw some of you into prison to test you. You will suffer for 10 days, but if you remain faithful, even when facing death, I will give you the crown of life. Anyone who fears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. Whoever is victorious would not be harmed by the second death. And this is, a, I think, a ESV or NIV version, but it, in its simplicity, the word all says the same. No matter what version you read, and now Revelation 3, 9. You know, two or three witnesses, let every matter be established. And so the witnesses in the scripture say that there is someone perpetrating who the biblical um, aborigine Hebrews are. And so we must be Bereans and search out these matters. Um, Revelation 3, 9 says, look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews, but are not, but do lie. To come and bow down before, at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. All right. So. He says, I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Yahudim and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. That's Revelation 2, 9 through 11. And Revelation 3, 9 says, uh, likewise, I know that them that say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. It's written, thou shalt not lie. And by your words, you should be justified. And by your words, you shall be condemned. So we must speak the truth to one another. Let's seek this out. Um, so we're going to go right here. Now, the origin and outcome of replacement theology, first and foremost, is one. Today, Christianity say that they are the people of the Bible, that they replaced the true Hebrews because we were uh, didn't please the most high. Some say in Judaism, we kill, had the Messiah killed. And so there's very, um, there's a lot of confusion um, to what and who the real people are. And so because of this, they saying that they have the right to take the reign, Catholics too, that they have taken the position of the original native born Hebrews and Israelites which we know as Yasharal, but the word says something uh, totally different. He said, if you can number the sand, and all these other things, and in Romans 11 chapter, uh, he says that he has not forsaken his people, but he said, if you can number the sand, and it goes on, he said that we will no longer be a nation before him. So this is a rush for the enemy and the adversary to deceive and to rob. Trillions of dollars have been sent to the nation state and corporation of israel as people have believed this is the true biblical israel but that money belongs to the true descendants 
and I'm sure the devil's hand is closed and won't want to give up any benefits or repay the nations that have been deceived. But there is judgment coming. So those that lead into captivity shall go into captivity, and those that heal by the sword shall be killed by the sword in the same way. So it's not karma. The eyes not mock whatever a man or woman sow, that shall they also reap. Okay, now <clears throat> let's begin with those that say they are Jews and are not. Okay, everywhere, Proverbs 30th chapter, verse 5 through 9, it is written, Every word of Yahuwah, Elohim, is flawless. He is a shield to those that take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, or he will rebuke you and prove you a liar. So they are not Jews or Yahudim and do lie. Thou should not lie. You must understand it. Do not add to his words, or he will reprove you, and you'll be found alive. Rebuke you, and you'll be proved you a liar. Two things I ask of you, Yahuwah, do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only food convenient for me. Least I steal and take your name in vain. They say, otherwise I might have too much and disown you and say, who is Yahuwah? Or I may become poor and steal. And so dishonor the name of my Elohim, or take it in vain. So not to keep the commandments, basically, it's taking it in vain, taking his name in vain. Right there, it says, at least I steal and take your name in vain. Verse 9, uh, 9 of Proverbs, the 30th chapter. So it's written, thou shalt not steal. So we see the error of Christianity saying the laws are done away with because they stole land and raped and pillaged and robbed and colonized worldwide. And still say they are righteous. But it's written in the psalm, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with you? Surely not. So your forefathers, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Jefferson, all these uh, uh, people of uh, Great Britain that came over here uh, as nobles and deceived, they are not in the way of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So your forefathers are not the biblical forefathers. Thus you are... Uh, your uh, replacement theology is nullified. You should know them by their fruits. Do no harm. Love does no harm to his neighbor, but you still preach white supremacy and hide behind the cloak of righteousness in the scriptures. And we'll be held accountable on the day of judgment if you don't repent. Also, okay, so we're going to go uh, right here. I will post these links in this uh, fair use uh, I don't bow down to the jurisdiction, but for their purposes, I use their own laws against them. So, for you say, uh, I have all rights to speak the truth out of love without injuring anyone. This is for edification purposes only, and not to slander, for I'm a Hashemite, so it cannot be anti-Semitic. Afro-Asiatic, eighth wonder of the world. Afro-Asiatic Aborigine, a Hebrew, Hashemite, Ben Yosef, Ben Yehuda. Ephraim in Babylon, daughter, America. Okay, right here we have, this is a young Benjamin Netanyahu, okay? So the way to destroy the enemy is that in any court and exhibits what you present, so they won't holler anti-Semitism, you use the enemy or adversary or the, the, um, whoever's standing against you, your opponent, you use their own words against them because the scriptures say, by your words you shall be justified and by your words you shall be condemned. So we'll go down this. We know Genesis 10, 1 through 3, tells us that Ashkenaz is of Japheth, which is not a Shemite, but they scream anti-Semitism, which is wrong and error. And they bully others to comply to this roots. But what is light exposes the darkness. Would it have no fel uh, fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose it for what is light exposes the darkness. So it's not about me. It's about exposing the, so people will know the truth and that way they can ponder their path more excellently in all humility, understanding that Yah desire all men to be saved, but this replacement theology is a ruse and it is nothing but a lie. So we saw that. Let me read this article. This is from Wikipedia. Uh, and also something from, and also when I'm using their words, we're going to go to the Jewish Encyclopedia, the uh, Encyclopedia of America now, 
uh, the Encyclopedia of Judaica, uh, 1972, Encyclopedia of Americana, 1985, and they have some in the, U uni the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, the New Gro Growler Encyclopedia, uh, and of course the Bible, and in their own words, the Jewish Almanac, you know, 1980, Jewish Almanac, page three. Strictly speaking, it's incorrect to call it ancient Israelite a Jew or to call a contemporary Jew, a modern day Jew today, an Israelite or Hebrew. This is their own words, 1980, Jewish Almanac. That is uh, Netanyahu, uh, when he was younger, I believe 19, uh, 67 photo by uh, defense, Israel Defense Forces. And so, now the next one, and that's the encyclopedia, okay, no, 1860. Now, this is important. This is when they start calling themselves Jews. So, this didn't happen to the late 1800s. Before, it was Yahudim, or Yahudi, true worshipers of Yah, which I am. You know, um, well, we'll test that in a minute. Edomite Jews began to call themselves Hebrews and Israelites in 1860. Encyclopedia Juda Judaica, 1971, volume 10, 23. Now, that's how you use the enemy's own words against them. So it's not conjecture, it's not slander, it's not anti-Semitism, but it is documented truth and fact that you friend befringing upon my freedom of speech and my rights if you violate it when you use the enemy words against them in any court of law or common law or whatever they're liable you can sue youtube Facebook, whoever that comes at you with this anti-semitism you just give them back their own words and say the devil's a lie pay me for whatever and so that's another way when you sue or you go to stand you must stand and you use their own words against them that's how we beat the devil. Hallelujah for that wisdom. You need to have ears to hear. Brock Yule. So Esau, Edom is modern day Jewry. 1925 Jewish Encyclopedia, volume 5, page 41. So they are not of Israel or Judah. Uh, the Encyclopedia of Americana in 1985 say Khazar is an ancient Turkic speaking people who ruled a large, powerful state in the steeps north of the Caucasus Mountains, oh, Caucasians, from the 7th century to their demise in the mid-11th century A.D. and the 8th century, its political and religious head, as well as the greater part of the Khazar's nobility, abandoned paganism and converted to Judaism. So they are converted. Eskenaz is a convert. And we go to Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, verse 27. After knowing that Genesis 10, 1 through 3 is the first witness, Jeremiah says, That's the New Testament. Jeremiah 51, 27, the Father showed me this, and I was like, oh, another verse uh, exposing the line. And uh, there are many scriptures referencing uh, Ashkenaz and the Bible. Now, if you are people of the Bible, you will use the Bible to solidify your stance that you are the people of Israel, not DNA that man made. It can be corrupted and it's not 100 percent. Now, if you stand with man, what do you do? You fall. So if you're the people of the Bible, we would find the truth in the Bible and you would use the Bible and your constitution would be the Ten Commandments, not no high laws, adding and subtracting from his word, period. He says, at least you be found a liar. And he rebuked you. So the most I rebuke you, you liars. As it is written. And it's not my opinion. Or my sins. But I feel it. Okay, verse 27 is written. Now we're going to start at verse 25. As Jeremiah 51. At uh, 24. I will repay Babylon and all the residents of Chaldea. For all their evil they have done in Zion before your very eyes. Look, I'm against you, devastating mountain. You devastate the whole earth. I will stretch out my hand against you and roll you down from the cliffs and turn you into a burned out mountain. 
No one will be able to retrieve a cornerstone or a foundation stone from you because you will become desolate forever. Raise a signal, a signal, okay, raise a signal flag in the land. Blow a ram's horn among the nations. Set apart the nations against her. Talking about the daughter of Babylon. This is verse 27. Summon kingdoms against her, Arat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Well, it would have said the Israelites. No, Ashkenaz. Upon a marshal against her, bring up horses like a swarm of locusts. Now we see that most 85% of the Congress is run by the quote unquote Jewish uh, Jews who started calling themselves Jews in 1860, which are Ashkenaz converts. So a convert, if not in a way, would add and subtract from the word. So we have the oral Talmud from Babylon, which they depend on versus the Bible. The people of the Bible would love the Bible and use the scripture. A so so with the word, not their opinion. So those that say they are Jews and are not are many. For even Islam feel that they are the people. But Ishmael is of Hagar. And the bondwoman, uh, which represents uh, slavery should not be, uh, well, have part with the free. And so we know Jerusalem above is the mother of us all, for Jerusalem today is in bondage with her children as it is now. And it's being trampled under the foot of the Gentiles for Ashkenaz and that family is say they are the, of the nations of the Isles in Genesis 1 through 3. So we just read uh, Jeremiah 51, 27. So we know that Ashkenaz, uh, according to their own words, that is incorrect to call them a Hebrew of, or Israelite of the Bible. Okay, so this is a modern day ruse and the world is a stage and they are actors. So to be Jewish is like being childish. Uh, if I'm childish, I'm acting like a child. If I'm Jewish, I'm acting like a Jew or a Yehudi. The ish, ish and isha. But yeah, the isms, the schisms in these last days. So we are to take heed that no one steal our crown, and we should know the truth, and the truth shall set us free. That's what it's all about. For once truth comes forth, then judgment will uh, come. That's why the enemy is trying to silence the lambs. Because once the truth go forth, then they're without, um, basically the, the veil has been removed, and they have no excuse for their sin. And that's why I say I'll make them come and bow before your feet and all these things, to know that I've loved you. For Jacob going through Jacob trouble, they're not the five, Fortune 500 companies owning media, social media, and everything today to suppress truth and what have you, and to hold the world hostage by their own means through a fiat currency and a central bank system set up by the Rothschilds and Rockefellers, cousins, and all these Ashkenaz down the line. Okay, so I believe the Pope is Jewish, and a lot of the leaders are Jewish, and so... These are perilous times. But Genesis 10, 1 through 3 says, These are the family's records of Noah's sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. They also had sons after the flood, the deluge. Verse 2 of Genesis, the 10th chapter. Japheth's sons, Gomer, where we get uh, Gog and Magog, uh, well, Germany, basically. So Japheth's sons are Gomer, where we get Germany. Magog, uh, Gog, I believe is Russia. Magog, Media. Uh, the Mennonites, uh, Javan, Grecians, Tubal, Meshach, and Teras. Gomer's, verse 3, Gomer's sons are Ashkenaz. Oh, so they have some German Ashkenaz, Nazi, Ash, Ken, Nazi, Ash, Ken, Nazi, Ash, man, Ken, Ken, Ken folk, Nazis. Huh. Ashkenazi. Okay, so Gomer's son of Ashkenaz, Riphat and Togamar. And Yavan's sons are Elisha, Tarish, Kittim, which is Rome, and Doadem. So Rome is not an Israelite or Hebrew of the Bible, but they have said that uh, Messiah gave them, or Peter gave them the key, which is a lie. In Deuteronomy 17, chapter, it says, Don't make a foreigner or a stranger. A rule over your people. So Peter would not violate Torah. And they can't find this uh, paper, um, a scroll showing where Peter gave him that. 
it just so happened to disappear. So it's all hyperbole, conjecture, and lies fabricated to deceive the masses. And so it goes on to say in uh, <clears throat> Kittim Dawadam, verse 5, the coastland people spread out into their lands. These are Japheth's son by their clans and their nations. Each group has his own language. And also it says uh, in another version, these are the people of the nations, of the island of the nations. And so heathens, Gentiles. But they use this and make others feel that they're less than human beings. And they are Gentiles themselves. But we get heathen. <sighs> okay, we got that out. So those that say they are Jews and are not, we're addressing Judaism first and Ashkenazi. And so it says, in their own words, not my opinion, strictly speaking, it is incorrect to call an ancient uh, Israelite a Jew or to call a contemporary Jew uh, Israelite a Hebrew, uh, so basically of the Bible. And then the next one says, in 1860, see, Edomite Jews began to call themselves Hebrews, uh, Israelites in 1860. And Esau, Edom is modern Jewry. That's a uh, 1925 Jewish encyclopedia. And the first one, uh, Judaica Encyclopedia, 1971, volume 10 and 23. Okay. Now let's see if we can Get a few more witnesses. Uh, Academic American Encyclopedia, 1985. Ashkenazim, the Ashkenazims are one of the two major divisions of the Jews, and the other being the Sephardi. Encyclopedia Americana, again, 1985. Oh, let's drop down to the Jewish Encyclopedia. Kazars, a non Semitic. Oh, their own words. Okay. Khazars, a non Semitic, Asiatic, Mongolian tri tribal nation who immigrated into Eastern Europe about the first century. Uh oh, when we've been punished and moved around. Who were converted as an entire nation to Judaism in the seventh century by the expanding Russian nation, which absorbed the entire Khazar population and who account for the presence in Eastern Europe of the great numbers of Yiddish speaking Jews in Russia. Poland, Lithuania, Galicia, Bersibia, and Romania. And we can put Ukraine in there as well. So they're all relatives and kin folks sending billions of dollars to one another as they fight these commercial banker wars and get rich. The mockery and the tyranny and the atrocity of the injustice have been coming from us, a certain people. And other nations, as in Psalms 83, have joined in conspiration. The allied nations, if you put a abbreviation there, all lied nations. The all lied nations. Okay, uh, we jump down to Encyclopedia Judaica. Kazars, in this 1972. And so that's how you defeat the enemy, beloved. You use their own words against them. So you're not speaking hate, you're speaking truth. And you give the Father something to work with. And if they, if, they, if they still block and ban you, you praise them. Because it says, rejoice when you enter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith builds patience. Let patience have its perfect work, that you might be complete and entire, wanting nothing. So this is what brings light to a, a world sitting in darkness. To know the truth, now that we understand who we are and whose we are, and that we dropped the ball, where's the boasting? You know. Look at us. Don't do what we did. We stopped keeping the commandments. We wanted to be like the other nations. We wanted us a Obama, a Trump. We wanted the Louis Vuittons and all these things. Well, he told us how this would happen and what they would do to us. And he let us go our own way. And so I'll see what they're in, maybe. And we see what happened to us. Okay. So the Judaica in 1972 says, uh, Encyclopedia, Kazar is a national group of general Turkey type, independent and sovereign in Eastern Europe between the 7th and 10th century CE. During part of this time, the leading Khazars professed Judaism. In spite of the negligible information of an archaeological nature, the presence of Jewish groups and the impact of Jewish ideals in Eastern Europe are considered considerable during the Middle Ages. Groups have been mentioned as migrating to Central Europe from the East, often have been referred to as Khazars. 
thus making it impossible to overlook the possibility that they originated from within the former Khazar Empire. And that is the Encyclopedia of Judaica, 1972. Now let's go down to the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia. It says, and I quote, the primary meaning of Ashkenaz and Ashkenazim in Hebrew is Germany and Germans. This may be due to the fact that the home of the ancient ancestors of the Germans is media. Social media. <laughs> Which is the biblical Ashkenaz, Karus, K-R-A-U-S-S, -S, is of the opinion that in the early medieval ages, the Khazars were sometimes referred to as Ashkenazim. About 92% of all Jews are approximately 14 million 500,000 are Ashkenazi, and we know that Ashkenaz is incorrect to call them a Hebrew or uh, Israelite of the Bible. So, Jew, uh, the word Jew, they uh, come from Jude, or it could be like Judas. You know, the master had a Judas too. And so, you should know them by their fruits, not their color of skin. Not saying that all Ashkenazim, you know, if they're grafted in and believe in the Messiah, you know, Shalom Aleichem, Hallelujah, I pray our perfection and our unity and love. And so we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of the master, as it is written. So be encouraged. Uh, we can't throw a whole nation under the bus. That's not wise. That's what they did to us. All black people are cursed. Uh, Hamites. No. He didn't curse Ham. He didn't curse Egypt, uh, Ethiopia, and all the rest of them. Why are you still mistreating them and calling them black? Black has no standing in law. Make a man offended by a word. And so the Negro... As the father showed me, a uh, Spanish person go back to Spain, Italian, to Italy, a uh, European, uh, uh, whoever's there today, go back to Europe, Russia, uh, to Russia, uh, Russian, uh, you know, and so on. Where does the Negro go? Uh, the map in the 1600s, 1700s, in the middle of Africa, shows you Negro land. They were saying go back to Africa, but that stems from the dispersion and the dysphoria of the Hebrews, as we have had several captivities, Egyptian, Assyrian, Babylonian, Persian, Greek, Rome, now America. The last one, that's seven, is complete. Let my people go. Okay, so uh, New Growler Encyclopedia. Ooh, that's a mouthful. But you can see the Universal Jewish Encyclopedia, and that is there. And so let's read this. Wow. This new growler encyclopedia, Khazars, the Khazars, a Turkic people, created, created a commercial and political empire that dominated some uh, substantial parts of South Russia during much of the 7th uh, through 10th centuries. During the 8th century, the Khazar aristocracy, aristocracy, but okay, we're going to leave that alone before we beat it up some more. <laughs> uh, Aristocracy. Uh, Okay, there we go. And the Kagan, uh, the Kagan uh, king, were converted to Judaism. The Khazars established their capital at Ital, or Atal, A T I L, in the Volga Delta. And for four centuries thereafter, this Jewish empire held the balance of power between the Christian Byzantine Empire and the Muslim Caliphate. The fortified Khazar city of uh, Sharkil on the Lower Don River was built by with Byzantine help and served as a crossroad to Central Asia. So the Christians helped them build this. And the Khazars controlled many of the trade routes to the Orient. Now go back and read the Christian Black Codes and the letter from Leopold and then also Dom de Versa or the Pope. Basically they scattered across the nations and Acts I was just reading uh, they asked to leave Rome, and they said you should not Judaize. And that word is not Jew, but the letter J is five, six hundred years ago. Uh, o, so is you should not Yahudize, worship Yah. That's why they brought in the Easter versus Passover. Easter is like a Trojan horse, keeping it to make you forget about the Messiah in the second Exodus. See, it's a, re a rehearsal. It's one of the feasts to remind us that he's going to deliver us from Pharaoh. And those that be too powerful for us. So what did the enemy do? Bring in some for your stomach. You know, uh, eggs and what have you. Candy on Halloween, the day of the dead. And Christmas and all these things that the fathers say don't worship him like the heathen. That's what they do. We are not too. That's why we're punished for disobedience. Angels of the law is no excuse. 
in Hebrews it said the people sinned in ignorance. And also in Leviticus it was an atonement, a sacrifice for those that sin in ignorance. So that's why we're to study the word and know what is written. That for sin is breaking the law. Transgression the law. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Most of these we know. But the other important instructions can be found in the Old and New Testament combined. The fortified uh, Khazar city of Shurakil on the Lower Dun River was built about with Byzantine help and served as a crossroad to Central Asia. The Khazars controlled many of the trade routes on the Orient. Some of the Radonites, Jewish merchants from Gaul, for example, were accustomed to crossing the Khazar Empire while traveling to and from China and India. During the late 10th and early 11th centuries, an alliance of Byzantine, Byzantine knights and Russians broke the power of the Khazars in the Khmer uh, uh, hmm. In 965, Sai Tov Slav, the first Duke of Kiev, decisively, uh, decisively defeated the Khazar army. Further to the east, new waves of Turkic invaders overran the remains of the Khazar state. So they went to the debunked, uh, disbanded League of Nations. In 1917, they started plotting to take the land, and they wanted a state, and they gave it to them by the British, which are not the true Europeans either, because the Europeans uh, would have you today that uh, now what they call white people, they are from the Caucasus Mountains, Caucasians. We don't hear that much, but they love to call us by words. Nevertheless, it exposes them and their lives, the Caucasus Mountain. They're all related. And this is not conjecture. It's not slander, but it is true. If I pray you repent, uh, seek love amongst us, love unfeigned, without biases, without racism, Without prejudices at this juncture in our salvation, at least we be deceived. Yah has no respected person, neither should we. Nevertheless, he has not forsaken his people. This is what this is addressing. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem and Ham, Japheth. And unto them were born the sons after the flood, the sons of Japheth, the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz. Genesis 10, 1-3. Therefore, the Bible proves that Ashkenaz Jews, Khazars, are not the descendants of Shem and cannot be Shemites. And we'll stop there. It goes on, has a lot of things. Care my king, adopt Judaism, and converts his army and people. Oh, let's read that. Kim, yeah, right. Oh. <laughs> and let's see. And then it has the facts of the facts. Uh, Encyclo Encyclopedia Judaica. And so this, this goes on and on, family. Uh, you know, uh, you can sit here and read and Exposed the lies all day. But this is the state of the world today. They have believed the lie. And have stolen our position, our identity, which is identity theft. And so judgment is coming for truth is going forth. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, Kim Yarite, um, Kim Yarite, uh, it says, see Sabians, Jewish Encyclopedia, page 403. Sabians, the inhabitants of the ancient kingdom of Sheba in southeastern Arabia, known from the Bible, classical writers, and native inscriptions. The genealogies of Genesis give three pedigrees for Sheba, the Epon uh, eponymous ancestor of the Sabians who is variously termed one, the son of Ra'ama and the grandson of Cush. Genesis 10, 7, and semicolon, 1 Chronicles 1, uh, verse 9, semicolon. Um, let's say Ezekiel 27, 22, and Ezekiel 38, verse 13. Number two, the two sons of Joktan and the great-grandson of Shem. Genesis 10, Verse 28, First Chronicles 1, 22. And the sons of Jock, Sean, and the grandson of Abraham by Keturah. Genesis 10, I mean Genesis 25, verse 3. First Chronicles 1, 32. There seem, therefore, to have been three stocks of Sabians, 
one in Africa, uh, the Ethiopian city of Saga, mentioned by Strabo geography, and the other two in Arabia. And the outline of history, H.G. Wells says, it is highly probable that the bulk of the Jews' ancestors never lived in Palestine at all, which witnesses the power of historical assertions over fact. You can't make this stuff up. And all praise to the Father for bringing it out. And you who's your name. And then we go, you and your studies. He was showing me about the Resolution 81 and also the League of Nations. Why it was this banded? It wasn't doing right. Like the United Nations is not doing right either. They gave them the promised land knowing that they are not the people of the Bible. So it should be disbanded, in my opinion, as well. The United Nations has not stopped or benefited anyone but those constituents that pay them. And nations are crying and hollering out for help. We're looking for a nation that cannot save. United Nations. Psalms 83 sounds like. So that is those that say uh, Jews with uh, Ashkenaz. Now, it says, I know your works in tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Yahudim, a true worshiper of me, and are not. Now, Yahudim, a true worshiper, will keep the commandments. Here's the patience of the saints, those that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Yahushua. I believe that is Revelations 14, uh, 12. Let's make sure. So to be a saint, <clears throat> you have to keep the commandments. You know, yeah. You actually have all authority. Okay. Let's see, it's fifteen. No, fifteen, twelve. No, can't be. Twelve. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Well. It's in the Revelation. I post it in the description. But it says, here's the patience of the saints, those that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Yahushua. So if you're a saint, you keep the commandments. Uh, like I said, those that love me, remember my commandments to do them. Show mercy, you know, to uh, thousands. Exodus 20, verse 6, John 14, 15 says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, Revelation 22, verse 14 is written, blessed are they that do his commandments. So, Replacement theology and Christianity, which is the daughter of Rome, um, the beast, Babylon. So the daughter of Babylon, Christianity, 43,000 denomination. The master said the house divided against itself can't stand. So we see the confusion there, and we know that Yah is not the author of confusion. So the origin and outcome of replacement theology and credit uh, to them uh, by Ron Matson and... Um, that was a Wikipedia and all those other uh, depictions or those exhibits, they uh, come from those various encyclopedias and documented historical facts for the gainsayers that you might overcome when asked this question again. So, and in, uh, in all meekness and wisdom, but we know we're not ignorant of the devil taxes and strategies you know, with anti-Semitism, which is a rule that was created by them as well. Theodore Herschel in 1860. That's the first time they start calling themselves Jews. Otherwise, they're Ashkenaz. And according to scripture, a genealogy is said by your father, not your mother. So that you would see them acting out with things that are not scripture, like the Noahide laws. You keep seven and we keep these ten. No. One set of rules, laws for all, native born and the strangers. So we see the air when in the land they have submitted to. LGBT uh, faction and propaganda, and Tel Aviv is like Sodom and Gomorrah, which lines up with scriptures, where it says in the last days, the two witnesses, where they would kill Sodom, uh, spiritually Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, Sodom and Egypt. But Egypt is the bondage. And so that's why there's racism against the Palazzo, or the Ethiopian Jew, Jews and converts. And we have converts everywhere, of course, worldwide. Uh, we have Jews everywhere because people want to worship the only true living Elohim. But he has not uh, put away his people. So 
in the last days, uh, they're going to be punished, and many of the nations are going to see the line and start helping us return in the second exodus. And we will fly on the shoulders of the Gentiles, and they will help us return. And today they have been punishing and the people of the Bible and uplifting the wrong people, the people of Satan, and giving them money, thinking that they are the chosen ones through lies. And so that's what the scripture is addressing, addressing in Revelation 2, 9 and 3, 9. So uh, this is by Ron Mason, uh, the origin and outcome of replacement theology. Uh, all praise to the Almighty. He says, replacement theology was introduced to the church shortly after Gentile leadership took over from Jewish leadership, or Yahudi. And see, many of these people don't know the truth either. So when you see a lot of this, when you see Jews and everything, just think about the so-called Negroes. Like I said, they, uh, Italian go back to Italy and all these other places. Negroes, ham progenitor of the dark races, but not the Negroes. And everybody else got a place to go. Uh, Gomer, German, Germany and all these, you know, uh, German, uh, go back to Germany and Italian, Italy, Spain, Spain. Well, we're the Negroes. They removed our land off the map, and then they stole our land, and then they left us in with the Hamites and said that we were all cursed together. My grandfather was a Cherokee in research. They wrote with block Hebrew before they whitewashed them and started teaching them English. None of this will be found in the history books. They deny critical race theory but uh, teaching, but they want you to know everybody else's history. They give us a black history month. Is there a white history month or a Jewish history month? The atrocity. Why not? So these is what the devil has dealt out in these last days by those that say they have replaced us. And they do lie. The premises of this belief are that Israel, the Jewish people in the land, are replaced by the Christian church to fulfill the purposes of God and to become the historic continuation of Israel to the exclusion of the former. That's Christianity. That's why they brought in the black codes and all this. And you see the segregation and the separation of us. But until they own up the lie because the land is not cleansed unless those who spill the blood, blood be spilled. So judgment is coming and this is why the enemy is running and trying to kill off the rest of us. What is replacement theology? According to replacement theology, post the Pentecost event of Acts uh, chapter 2, the term Israel, as found in the Bible, now refers to the church. Hmm. He said on add or subtract from his word, didn't he? So replacement theology is adding and subtracting from his word as well. So the church is wrong. Christianity. <clears throat> it says, such as the English, Spanish, or French. Wow. Replacement theology teaches that apart from repentance, the new birth and incorporation into the church, the Jewish people have no future. So they get on the Jews, they're fighting, they're fighting one another, and ain't neither one of them the people of the Bible. It's a dog and pony show to distract us while they trample on the foot the so-called Negroes, the Hebrews of the Bible, who would give account on the day of judgment according to their works. As it is written. And so uh, it says, incorporated into the church, the Jewish people have no future, no hope, or no calling in the plan of God. The promises, covenants, and blessings ascribed to Israel in the Bible have been taken away from the Jews and given to the church, which has superseded them. However, the Jews are subject to the curses found in the Bible as a result of their rejection of Christ. That's why they justify beating us up, killing us, and hanging us on trees, and shooting us, calling themselves not guilty. Because a black has no standing in law. And if you say I'm black and I'm proud, you're basically a beast and they can kill you. No, I'm Aboriginal, American, indigenous. According to Webster 1828, the copper color race is found here by the Europeans and now used by the Europeans. So now they call themselves Americans, but that's what they refer to us as first. Copper color, that's what I am a Negro, a Hebrew. Now we start seeing the matrix and the deception, and you start knowing who we are. Wake up, Jacob. <clears throat> Time is running out. Is there a basis for replacement theology? Let's see. They use various scriptures, too, to say this, so let's look at this. Those that say they are Jews are true worshipers of Yah and are not. 
<clears throat> love does no harm to his neighbor. Even they maxim say do no harm, but they have harmed us for millennia, even to today. Racial profiling, all kinds of things, you know, testing, biological weapon. <clears throat> A favorite stalling point for this doctrine is found in the chastisement of backsliding Israel by the prophet Jeremiah. He declares, you who have said also unto me in the days of Joash the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She is gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. And I said, after she had done all these things, turned out unto me. But she returned not, didn't repent. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw when all for all these causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away, divorced her. So this is what they try to use, and giving her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the hearted also, us. Jeremiah 3, 6 to 8. And another one they use is Matthew 21, 43. During the latter stage of the ministry of Yahushua the Messiah, he spoke of a coming severe judgment on the nation of Israel. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth fruits thereof, worthy. And whosoever fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. That's the second one they use. And another one is Romans 2, 28, verse 29. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew, or Yahudi, to worship a Yah, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. They use these scriptures and they twist them to see, oh, yeah, so, well, it don't matter if you're a Jew or nothing, we all one. Yep, he hasn't forsaken his people, and he's going to do a delegation. You're fast talking. You're selling something that God spelled. And so what is the history of replacement theology? It says, Nidus of Antioch uh, and CA 50, 117 AD, taught that those who partake of the Passover are partakers with those who killed Jesus. This is how they justify it. Justin Martyr, in 100 and 106 AD, claimed God's covenant with Israel was no longer valid and that the Gentiles had replaced the Jews. Yahudi, us. See, and Justin Martyr, all these people of replacement of uh, the Great Reformation and Protestants, they were protesting against Babylon, the, the mother, Rome. And so they branched out and made Christianity. That's why Paul said we group Cretans, and if you look up that word, it says Christianus, which we get Christian from. Rebuke them, they are slow batteries, liars, all of them. Say, rebuke them that they might be sound in the faith. So you Christians, keep the commandments. It is written, if you love me, keep my commandments. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not lie on your mother and father, uh, thou shalt not covet anything of thy neighbors. Remember the Sabbath day, the seventh day to keep it holy. Uh, make no graven images, have no other mighty one, don't take his name in vain before him, thou shalt not commit murder. That's why you said the commandments were done away with. It exposes your tyranny. But we all must repent. The day of judgment is coming. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. <clears throat> now, Arrhenius uh, in 130, 202 AD, said, declared the Jews were disinherited from the grace of God. Uh, Tertullian in 155, 230, blamed the Jews for the death of Jesus and argued that they had been rejected by God. Now, when I'm saying Jews, we know that Jew was just created and used in 1860 by way of Theodore Herschel and those that say they are Jews or Ashkenaz. Okay, but they are talking about the actual so-called Negro Hebrews. And so they were using this and acts Rome was kicked them out of Rome. Then we got kicked out of Spain. And then before then, uh, in second Ezra, they traveled to a place, took a year and a half. And the Jewish encyclopedia says, Azareth is America. So now we look at the Cherokees and they were writing in block Hebrew. <laughs> we're the Hebrews. And the Seminoles or Sheminoles, the Indian War, were people of color. And the Racial Integrity Act in 1927, I believe, or 24, this one, they lumped everybody in instead of Indian because we were free. And we were free, free Negroes and everything. They lumped them all in, called them 
black Negro, basically. You know, it was overturned. This was overturned in 1967, I believe, the Racial Integrity Act, because it's uh, biased and it was unjust. But they left these things, three-fifth of man and the one-drop rule on the books because of the tyranny. Why haven't they removed them if they really want to do right? You know, uh, but if we use the one-drop rule, you can destroy them by this. Abraham uh, slept with Hagar, which was an Egyptian. He had a child, Ishmael. Uh, in Egypt, you think black, Cush, Cushite, Ethiopian. They like to take us out of the Bible. So Abraham married a black woman. I'm believing he was a man of color as well. Let's go on down. Joseph married an Egyptian. We have Potiphar's daughter, you know, the priest of Bone. He married, so that's a black woman. Now we go down to Moses. He married uh, Ethiopian. Miriam was struck with leprosy. That's a black woman. Now we go to King David. He married Bathsheba. Would they be going out finding white women in the land of the black faces? No. I'm not saying there wasn't some there, but we were told and instructed not to intermarry with other nations. So these were people of color. And if you remove Moses, Joseph, Abraham, and King David from the Bible because of the one drop rule, you take everybody out of the Bible, and we have no more Bible. That's replacement theology, and it's a lie. So you see that we, people of color, are uh, all throughout the Bible. And the one drop rule should be disbanded and removed. We are Hebrews. All praise to the Most High. Now, O-R-I-G-E-N, uh, in 185 through 254 A.D., he was responsible for much anti-Semitism, all of which was based on his assertion that the Yahudi, uh, which they say Jews, were responsible for killing Yahushua, uh, they called Jesus. Now, the Council of Nicaea in 325 A.D. Uh, prohibited Christians from sharing a meal with a Jew, marrying a Jew, blessing a Jew, observing the Sabbath. See, this is where it started. You should not Judaize, uh, Yahudaize, worship Yah. And they brought in Easter, Christmas, and all these pagan holidays, or holidays they call them. He would think to change days and times, feast times and days. In the Bible, it's day one through five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What day? Monday to worship the moon, Sunday to worship the sun, Wednesday, Woden, Thursday, Thor, Zeus, you know, all these things. Yeah, the devil's in the detail. And so uh, they changed the celebration of the resurrection from the Jewish feast of first fruit to Easter. Now we have the hoodwink. In an attempt to disassociate it from Jewish feasts, the council stated, for it is unbecoming beyond measure that on this holiest uh, festival we should follow the custom of the Jews, the Yahudi. Henceforth, let us have nothing to do in common with this odious people. It decided that the Sunday, uh, the, it decided the Sunday a week after the Sunday after Passover would be an official date, and that all celebrating on Passover will be considered anathema. You'd be kicked out of the uh, church. This is when the persecution of the quarto demison, whatever that means, begins. The term quarto, okay, you're going to tell it. Quarto o deciman is Latin for fourteeners. Ah, the Passover is on the 14th. And it refers to those that celebrate Passover on 14 Nisan. The Hebrew, they didn't want you to do that. No, keep Easter. Wow, we've been deceived. Paul said the people worship the demons. You pray over their ham. Y'all won't bless what the word don't approve. Leviticus 8, 11 chapters say it's an abomination. Nobody in the whole Bible ever ate it. They told it was soul food. They give it to us to keep us defiled so they can keep us in them slave field and keep pummeling us. That's why they say the commandments are done away with. As long as we don't keep the commandments, the enemy, the adversary, can do what they will to us Negroes, us Hebrews of the Bible. Because we start keeping the commandments, guess who's going to step in? The Almighty. That's what he's waiting on us. A remnant will be saved because everybody don't want to start separating. You, Eusebius, uh, in 275-339 A.D., taught that the promises of Scripture were meant for the Gentiles and the curses were meant for the Jews, the Negroes. 
he asserted that the church was the true Israel, replacement theology. Hillary uh, Pontier's uh, 291 uh, three to 371 AD wrote Jews are a perverse people accursed by God for hmm. Gregory of Nasi died uh, AD 394 Bishop of Capacidia wrote the Jews are a broad a brood of vipers haters of goodness Jerome wrote in 347 through 407 AD described the Jews as serpents wearing the image of Judas their psalms and their prayers are the brain of donkeys. Now we see the slander, and we start seeing that racism come in. Augustine in 354, 430 AD, asserted that the Jews, or the Negro Hebrews, deserved death but were dis, uh, dis, in, destined to wander the earth to witness the victory of the church over the synagogue. So they're fighting one another over our heritage. During the Middle Ages, passion plays abound, and they were used to cultivate hatred toward the Jewish people. Now, the thing, the reason that the Jews or Ashkenaz were hated, I found because of the money laundering and the money changing and everything, and people were envious of this, and, you know, you get messed over by banks and stuff like that. Yeah, I can see them being chased out of nations to nations, and, you know, big-nosed Jew, you know, slanders we heard, and because they were bankers and they're, they're very intelligent people, as far as financial uh, things and politics is concerned, but they're not the biblical Israelites or Hebrews by their own words. And so the reason they have been disbanded and everything, because of the deeds and the works of their hands, not because they were the true biblical Israelites or Hebrews of the Bible. In the research I found, and not my opinion, and by their own words, you the gang say, you will rebuke you. Okay, and so during the Middle Ages, passion plays abounded, and they were used to cultivate hatred toward the Jewish people. Oh, here's a good one. In 1478, Pope Sixtus the Fourth, I guess, with the Roman, granted the monarchs of Spain. Here we go. Ferdinand and Isabella, which means Jezebel, Isabella and Elizabeth. If you look up the root etymology, it's Jezebel. Teach my servants to eat things sacrifice. So the queen was in control, Queen Elizabeth. And basically, Christianity have been teaching us it's okay eating everything, pray over it. So I have a few things against you. The woman uh, that ran into the wilderness is us. The man child is the Messiah. The woman that sits on the beast is this religious system. So the few things against you because you allow Jezebel, Jezebel to be synonymous with the Christianity and what have you, that have taught the false doctrine. That's that woman sitting on the beast. And Rome is synonymous with Babylon. And who broke out from Rome or Babylon? Christianity through the Reformation. And the, when they were protesting, they called them Protestant, Protestants. So they left them, so they the daughter of Babylon. <clears throat> so they, we know that Ferdinand and Spain, and Spain, they kicked the Jews out. Those were people of color, Negroes. They weren't Ashkenaz. Rome kicked them out in the book of Acts. So now we start seeing that was that we were been hated and by all the nations. They know and they conspired us in Psalms 83 to plot our demise and our genocide. That's why they're trying to kill off all the indigenous and what have you, even today. So uh, he granted the monarchs of Spain, Ferdinand and Isabella, Jezebel, uh, the right to establish a special inquisition in Spain to deal with baptized Yehudi who were suspected of remaining faithful to Yehudism, the true worship of Yah. It wasn't with the mixture, and it shouldn't be with the mixture. Yahudism. They call it Judaism. Thousands were burned at the stake by order of the Spanish Inquisition. And you'd be hated by all nations for my name's sake. 1942, King Ferdinand decided that all Spanish Jews should be banned. Okay, they're trying to get me. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil's a lie. We endeavor on. 
And the closing after this, uh, the last one I read in 1942, uh, not 1492, so lock me, King Ferdinand decided that all Spanish Jews or Yahudi should be banned from Spain. It was feared that the Jews, the Yahudi, the Negro Hebrews were a danger to Christianity. Hello. Approximately 150,000 Yahudi were forced to leave Spain. That's the truth. And so even Shepard, the Shepardic were people of color, all down in Jamaica and, and islands where we've been scattered, Caribbean and everything. The ruse and the plot is very thick and deep. All praise to the Almighty. So now we can understand those that say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. All praise to the Almighty. Now let's continue to read some scripture and for encouragement and guidance. And Yahushua answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Messiah, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Who's more hated than a person of color worldwide? No one. But we must be in the way of righteousness, sorry. At least our dying be in vain. We must uphold his holy name, his set apart name. Set apart, set apart, Yahuwah, I shall die. Here's the patience, oh, here we go. We got it. Is Revelations 14, 12 to 13. Ah, we looked in the Bible, but I didn't see it. But here it is. This is what a saint is. Here is the patience of the saints, the Kadashim in Hebrew. Here are they that keep the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yahushua. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in Yahuwah from henceforth. That's keeping his commandments and walking in the way. Yea, says the spirit, the Ruach, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. For his appointed man wants to die and then come to judgment. The whole duty of man is to keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of the offspring of Adam and Eve. And that's Revelations 14, 12 to 13. The first one I read was Luke 21, 12 to 19. Now let's read Isaiah 57, 1 to 2. The righteous perish and no man lays it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Yah is very merciful. He'll take you on away from here so you won't see your parents and your kinfolk suffering. Judgment's going to be meted out, beloved. He shall enter to peace or shalom, and they shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us, be it racism, bigotry, um, um, gluttony, uh, drunkenness, or uh, Sexual immorality, homosexuality, whatever sin that so easily causes you to stumble. Pray for deliverance, motor, to mortify the deeds of the flesh, and to overcome that we be not found wanting on the day of judgment, beloved. And to present each man and woman perfect toward Elohim, a source of the word, not their opinion. They speak of the world, and the world hears them, but we must speak as oracles of the Most High, as it is written. That way we will be delivered. The word is truth. And with a multitude of words, transgression is not lacking. The master told us, instructed us, let our words be few, especially amongst those that are without, on the outside, that are not believers or say they're believers and act in a different way. We must use discernment. You know, I grew up with a lot of Christians there, but I can't associate like that anymore, knowing the truth. I can't go into a, a church on Sunday knowing that that's the steeple is an asher pole. He said, don't worship him like that. It would not only take my conscience, now I'm being more than the most high. I'm going to go and try to save him anyway. I'm going to go fellowship with them anyway. When he says, what fellowship has darkened for light, good would he, a believer with an unbeliever. An unbeliever won't keep the commandments. So do you try to keep the Sabbath uh, for the sake of keeping the Sabbath? You break, uh, you, you fellowship with heathens or people that's not preach, preaching the truth? No, Paul said the one that was caught sleeping with uh, his father's wife, he said, why haven't you cast the person out? Separate the evil one from among you. That's what's supposed to be going on, and the elder's supposed to be tested and tried. Faithful, loyal to one wife, 
And all these things are instructions for a solid foundation for us to stand in these last days. We don't put people in place uh, because I know Bobo, I know he's a good man, but it should be a uh, collaboration of the assembly that comes together and, and it shouldn't be uh, some like a dictatorship where you lord over his flock, as I have witnessed. It's not your church. It's not that those are his people. It might be you're a shepherd over it, but if we're to encourage one another and those that are taught the law, share with all those that teach. So we have to have a humble heart and be receptive to whatever has been said. If he spoke to a donkey, a balam, sure he can speak to a child or anyone, even a white man or a black man, considering that fact, to get to you. So wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, lay us lay aside every way in the sin which does so easily besets us, cause us to stumble and fall. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto you who should the author and finisher of our faith, I believe, our Amunah, who for the joy, the Shemka, the Gila, the Karah, that was set before him, endured the cross, the stake, the tree, the pole, the spies, and the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of Elohim, for consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening, the correctioning of Yahuwah, nor faint when you are rebuked, when he reproves you, and show you, hey, this is wrong, through his word, his scripture. Don't get mad, don't get offended. But examine yourself on it if you did it and if you've been doing the sin. Yeah, okay, this is me. This is what I've been doing. Now that I understand I'm wrong, help me to overcome. Forgive me. You know, own it. Okay, acknowledge your sin, your transgression. So David said, if I hold the nickel in my heart, you will not hear me. You know, and so you don't want your prayer to be hindered, beloved. And ye have forgotten the exhortation. Oh, my son despise not the chastening of Yahuwah, no faint when you are rebuked. For Yahuwah loves who he loves, he chastens. And scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, he deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastises or chastens not? Hebrews 12, 1 through 7. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this Bessorah, this good news they call the gospel of the kingdom, shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Matthew 24, 13 through 14. This is a beautiful one, beloved. But pray ye. So this is instruction. What did he say? Pray. He said, this is the way you pray. Our Father who art in heaven. So this is another instruction for us in these last days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. So we must implement this prayerfully in our prayer life. I pray that my plight, though, when it go down, it don't be in the winter, Father, and neither on the Sabbath, because we're not, you know, can't move around and work and buy things, you know. So pray that you be delivered and that it don't come, your flight don't come on the Sabbath day. Because you might, you know, trying to honor Yah, you won't be able to move around and do things as you would. So pray that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, never, ever shall be. Wow. Except those days should be short, and there should no flesh be saved. So you see they're trying to alter our DNA. So if you alter your DNA, you're not considered flesh. or, uh, But you have a patent of a corporation that seeks to own your soul. <sighs> According to the scriptures and the Supreme Court ruling concerning patents of various inoculations, I would say. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. And how they're trying to woo everyone to get technology into their bodies, you know, that run faster, think smarter, and do all these other things. But if man made anything, they won't stand for them. They can't even control the artificial intelligence that they're working with now. Their spirit that is going to take over and do some kind of uh, Terminator, you know, cyborg thing. Which is true because Yah usually, whatever you create or put before him, he'll use that same thing and punish you and chastise you with. Like the giants, he turned them against one another. And so on and so on. The example is in scripture. They won't, they won't make it. And they won't be able to hide. Nowhere. He said, if you 
build your nest in the heavens or get your space station, try to get somewhere with Elon Musk. He said, or oh, you be in the sea or up under the ground. He says, like someone ran into the house and laid his hand on the wall and a snake bit him. They won't be able to escape, even in them five store five star hotels up underground. He will find you. Judgment's coming, beloved. For <clears throat> he said, unless the he said, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. For if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is the Messiah, uh, or there, believe it not, for there shall arise false messiahs. And we see that today. Yeah, some over in the Middle East right now. And false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, so much so that if it were possible. So they're going to be showing signs and wonders. Be on, be on the lookout. Watch and pray. They shall deceive the very, if, if it were possible, they will be able to deceive the very elect. Hallelujah. Behold, I've told you before, so I've warned you, this is this what's going to happen. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. I heard he was in the uh, desert of Vegas before. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning comes out of the east and shines even unto the west, so shall also the summer come in the son of Adam be. For wheresoever the carcass of the dead body is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Now, here we go. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, the church preached uh, rapture. We're getting out of here. But this really says in Matthew 24, uh, I'm reading 20 through 31. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, so there's a tribulation and a time that like, has never been on the face of the earth. This didn't happen in 70 AD. The nations were not judged, and we're still here. So it says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. So he's going to judge those uh, gods in, in the heavens or in the air that these people have been worshipped. The stars are going to fall and he's going to shake the heavens. Everybody's getting judged. And then shall appear the sign of the son of Adam in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Why are they going to mourn? Are they going to see a black man in the sky? I know Yah's spirit and we that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. If you cannot we. That would be a reason to cry, wouldn't it, if you've been mistreating the wrong people? That's just something to ponder. And also, if you're a sinner, there's going to be a lot of crying. I pray to be counted worthy to be taken with the righteous. That's my prayer as well. But they say, don't nobody say that uh, you will have sinned. Uh, uh, they say, don't say uh, who will have sinned or who will descend. That's to bring the Messiah up and down. But the word is nigh you. It's in your mouth to do it. So it's time out for lip service. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Obeying the precepts and traditions, Easter, Christmas, Halloween, the traditions of men as commandments. And he said, if you love me, keep it real with me. Keep my commandments, my instructions, follow. And so that's what it comes down to. No one likes to be taken for granted. What about Yah? The Almighty. That's what gets my heart. I'm messing up. You know, because everything's being taken. And if you love him like I do, it, it hurts. Oh, wretched man that I am, Paul said, who will deliver me? I think Yahuwah for Yahushua. But we still have to do our part, beloved. But thank God for sin abound, grace abound much more. We don't I don't say this to justify anything, but that's faith. I believe he will perfect that which concerns me and you. Belief without eyes, faith, is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Then shall appear the sign of the uh, Son of Adam in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Adam come in, in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a uh, great sound of a shofar and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other so the four winds that means the four corners of the earth so i was trying to flee and leave but i pray it said leave and he will protect only those found in his land so pray 
the Father will be done, whatever your lot may be, death will be a quickening. You know, if it's the flea uh, that he would open the door for, and then also if it's to stand, wherever he wants you. That should be our aspiration for as he is, so are we in this world. Not my will, but thy will be done. I mean, I mean. So we see after the tribulation of those days, he shall send his angels with a great sound of a shofar, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the end of the heaven to the other. Now that means we must prepare and stand because we were taught wrong. Christians taught us that we were going to be raptured out of here. We weren't going to the tribulation. But the scripture and the master says clearly, after the tribulation of those days. So, he can call us before, after, doing, or whenever. I don't know what day it might be for your calling, or he might call you on home. But whatever it is, we must be about our Father business. All praise to the Almighty, and you who shall must see your name, for we know nothing of ourselves. I mean, hallelujah. And this is the end of... Those who say they are Jews or Yahudi, true worshippers of Yah and are not. In Revelation 2 9, 3 9. Shalom Alekum, beloved.